Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom, welcome back to today's Daf Yomi Shabbos Nof Numbez. With four lines from the top, says the Gemara Tana de Be Menashe. We learned the Brisa from Be Menashe, the Bismedish of Menashe, as follows. Now, we're we'll discussing the Halacha that an animal may walk out into the on Shabbos wearing his gear, his leash, his muzzle, whatever it is that is suitable for this type of animal. Now what about an A's, a goat, which is a bit more tricky on account of the fact that he's thin and wiggly and perhaps it can pose a concern. Let's take a look at the Gemara. Tana de ben Menashe, A is a goat, shechokak lo ben kanya, where the uh, owner bored a hole, uh, drilled a hole through its horns, in that case, Yoitza ba'afsar b'shabbos. It may go out into Shisram wearing the afsar, this rope with, which they, they used to tie generally to the animal's mouth. In this case, he pushes it through its, its horns and secures it there. And there's no concern about going out on Shabbos wearing this afsar. Because otherwise, there's a concern, if he merely wraps it around his, his mouth or his, his neck, that the, that the A's, the goat, will wiggle out, slip out of it, and the owner will be left holding the, the rope in his hand. He might come to carry it for Amitzvah and Shisramim. So the only way it's possible is if he does a chakika ben karneo and secures the rope through its horns. Boy Rav Yosef, what about this idea? Tochav lo mal. What if he, uh, he puts it through its beard, the beard of the goat, he ties the beard in a uh, circle shape and pushes the officer, the rope through, through the beard, through the circle of the beard. Mao, is that okay? Kivon di iman koivla. Perhaps... There's a reason in favor because even the mantachla, if the A's tries to wiggle out, koivla, he is he's uh, gonna be in pain and it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna hurt him because it's um, it's it's gonna pull out the, the beard. So there, therefore, there's no concern that the A's will uh, will get rid of his officer. Lo yafsil and tuche, he will not come to wiggle out. Oidilma, perhaps zimnan durafi, perhaps the. Uh, the, the tying of the beard, this contraption won't really hold uh, too, uh, too long because the, um, the hair of the beard uh, don't really tie up too tightly. We know that hair is a, a, a smooth item. And perhaps the, uh, the knot won't really uh, last. And uh, it will loosen up, roughly, the nofil, and the afsar will drop down, the osle suye, and the owner might come to carry a dal damas vishasarabim. So is that an idea or not? Take it, we leave it unresolved. So pushing it through the horns is okay, but through the beard is, is a question. Continues the Gemara Tanan Hassan, we learned in the mission. This is regarding a para, a cow. She cannot go out and shesurab and wearing the ritzua, this, uh, this ribbon, which is um, running between its horns. Now, there are, there are two uh, functions for this ribbon. It can be used for noy, as an ornament, Rashi explains, for instance, that they, they color it and they braid it between its horns. It's meant as an adornment, as an ornament. Or, the purpose of this ritzua could be simply for shmira, to safeguard it so the owner holds on to the uh, ritzua and uh, uh, leads his animal, restrains his animal, restrains his para in that manner. So what are we speaking about in this mission? This mission that doesn't allow a para to wear the ritzua and shesurabim. I have a machlikas. Omar, the Rav Yirmi Rav Pligiba, there's a machlekes between Rav Shmo. Chad Omar, one says like this: Bein lenoi, whether this ribbon is coming for noi for adornment, Bein leshamer, whether it's coming for safekeeping. Usher, it is usher. Why is that? So he holds that noi is not a reason to allow the para to wear the ritzua because typically this is not something which is done to a para. It doesn't have a din of a tachshit. What about Lishamer? If it's coming to safeguard the part, to control the part, so the owner holds on to it. Why is that a problem? Let's take a look at Rashi. Rashi right here off on the side, which is uh, 16 lines from the top. Rashi says, Lishamer is also why the para, Mintra, a para can be safeguarded and secured below Yachiza, without even holding on to it. It's a tamed animal. Elo Malich Lafanov, he merely has the para walk in front of him, the only walks behind him, and leads it in that manner. So it doesn't need this type of shmira. Therefore, says Rashi, because Savar. So this shita holds that Nitirusi Seirasa, adding an extra measure of security, which is unnecessary in this case, Masuhi. This is considered to be a load, a Masuhi. It's not considered to be an item of, of apparel, of Tachshit. It is not bottle to the animal. It is rather considered to be a load. 
it's unnecessary. So once again, we have Rav and Shmuel having a, a machlekes regarding the Pshat and the Mishnah that Asrs, that prohibits using the, the Ritzua and the Pura. One says we're speaking about whether it's Lenoi for adornment or even the Shamer for uh, the purpose of safekeeping its Asr. Bechadomar, the other Shita says, we're not sure which one is it, Rav Shmuel. At this point, it's still anonymous. But the other one holds, Lenoi Asr. I agree with you regarding Noi, adornment, it's Asr, because typically this is not done for a Pura. And it's not considered to be a conventional form of tachshit of adornment. However, the shamer mutter, if it is constructed in a way that he can grab onto the onto the, uh, the, the strap, onto the ritzua, it's meant for that. It was placed there for that purpose. Then, then certainly it's mutter because the owner needs it to control the animal. So even though it's not necessary for the parah, but he chose to do so. So as far as the owner is concerned, it's there for the sake of shmirah. He uses it to control his parah. And it's considered to be part of the para. It's not a masri. Okay, so once again, the ritzu on the para is not allowed if it's coming for night, but if it's coming for shmir, we have a machlekes. But at this point, the more we don't know yet, the uh, the author of these of these opinions, we don't know the, the iman the amr. We know one is rav, one is shmur. The gemara is going to try to decipher this riddle. Amr of Yosef, tistayim. You can conclude. You can uh, clarify that it's actually the shmuel who the amr. Shmuel is the one who holds that if it's merely coming for dormant for noy, for beauty, then it's asr. But if it's coming leshamer, if the owner is uh, uh, intending on using it for shmira, then it's mutter. Although it's unnecessary to shmir yisera, it's still considered to be appropriate and is not a masr. How do we know Shmuel holds that leshamer is mutter? How do we know that he holds shmir yisera? Or as the Mar said, this uh, excessive restraint, this added measure of security is not considered to be a load. How do we know that? Very simple. The Omar Rafuna Barchi, Omar Shmuel. Halacha Kehananya. So we see Shmuel rules Paschas like Hananya, which uh, who who presented a Shita yesterday in the Fan Alpha base, that Nitirusa Yesari adding a unnecessary measure of security. For instance, placing a collar on the on the cat, although not required, ne- nevertheless it's considered to be a, a proper atachshit, we don't look at it as a load, although it's a shmir yisera. So apparently Shmuel holds this shita. He subscribes to this opinion that nitirusa yiserasa, added measure of security, is not a problem. So here too, regarding the ritzua, the para, although it is a shmir yisera, it's okay. So we appear to have a conclusion. Shmuel is a shita that holds. One second. Just the opposite. This time, you can prove, you can cl- conclude, the Shmuel hold the Amar, Bein Lenoi, Bein Lishama Asr. Actually, I have a right, that Shmuel holds the other opinion, that whether the Ritzu is coming for beauty or for Shmir, it's still Asr because it's not considered to be a Tachshit, it's considered to be a Masri. Even the Shmir, it's a Shmir Yisair and unnecessary. How do I know that Shmuel holds that a Shmir Yisair is a Masri? The Amar reviewed the Mashmo, reviewed the quoted Shmuel as follows. We had this in Daphne Aleph. Machlif in Lefnei Rebbe, these students, the Talmidim, they presented a question, a Shai Lefnei Rebbe, they switched things around, meaning, Shel Zubazumau, that the various animals uh, listed in our Mishnah, and the different types of um, apparatuses are appropriate for each animal, what about if they switch things around? For instance, the, uh, the Gomo, which is a tamed animal, was fi- outfitted with a, uh, a nose ring, which is unnecessary for him. It's, it's an excessive uh, Shmira. Or, as the Gemara proposed yesterday in the reverse as well, he, he fights the animal with outfitted with a, uh, a measly, uh, a weak, uh, weak uh, insecure type of uh, restrainer. So what if we switch things around? Is that okay? Is that also okay? Is that considered to be permitted on Shabbos? So the Gemara actually concluded yesterday that the Iker Shaila was to upgrade. Meaning, if the, uh, if the Gemara who doesn't need a nose ring was given a nose ring, is that okay? Omer fun of Rishmael Rav so Bishmol, the son of Rabbi Yaisi, presented, uh, announced, the son of Rabbi said as follows, Kachamar Abba, actually my father, who was Rabbi Yaisi, he listed four behemoths, Dalad behemoths, Yoytis Ba'afsar. He stated that there are four behemoths which, to which an afsar, this rope tied around the, the mouth, uh, goes around the neck as well, so this afsar is an appropriate form of shmira for the following four behemoths, Hasus, a horse, a parrot, a mule, a gomel, a camel, a chamar, and a donkey. 
So the fact that he listed these four animals and said that these four animals are meant to wear an officer, apparently he's coming to exclude something, he's coming to teach us something. Lovely, Muti, isn't he coming to exclude? An upgrade, for instance, Gomel B'chatom, if one upgrades and adds an unnecessary shmir, for instance, he puts a nose ring on an ordinary, typical Gomel who doesn't require it, it's considered to be a masri and inappropriate for Shabbos. So the fact that this story was related by Rabbi Huda Omar Shmuel, in the name of Shmuel, presumably he agrees with this, and he holds that upgrading is not permitted. A shmir ma'ula, a shmir yaseira, on a terusi yaseira is considered to be a load. So Abayi says, I have a riot, that Shmuel actually holds it to load. So now we have a, a contradiction, we have a stira. Over here, we have, a, we have an indication that Shmuel holds that upgrading unnecessarily is a load. Previously, we quoted Shmuel, who rules according to Hanania, who clearly tells us that upgrading is okay. So how do we reconcile this stira? Says the more Sami, you must delete, erase. Ho mikamiho. You must erase this uh, last uh, raya, this last uh, a quote in the name of Shmuel, where, where, where it seems it's indicative of Shmuel's opinion that upgrading is not appropriate. We'll delete that in the face of the, of the first quote of the um, Shmuel who rules according to Hananiah and indicates that a shmiri seir, an upgrade, is okay. So we'll delete this one in the face of that one. And we'll conclude that Shmuel holds upgrading is fine. Says him one second. Why do you pick and choose this one over that one? Umay chazis, the mesames ha. Why do you uh, prefer? What is your raya to delete this one? Mikame ha, in the face of the other one. Why don't you do it in the reverse? Sami ha, delete and erase. The first Shmuel, the Shmuel that seem to have ruled the coin to Hanani that upgrade is okay, erase that Shmuel, Mekameha, in the face of this Shmuel, and deem this, this quote of Shmuel to be more reliable, and rely on this one. And Shmuel indeed will hold that upgrading is Asr. So that's why I'll tell you why. The Ashikhan Shmuel, we found actually clearly that Shmuel holds, Shmuel the Amar Linoi Asr, the Shamar Muta, that if the ribbon is there for beauty, it's Asr. However, if it's there to provide Shmir, even though it's a Shmir, it's Sarah. He's adding an unnecessary measure of, of, of security, of safeguarding. He's upgrading it. It is mutter. We find clearly that Shmuel holds this shita. And therefore, we prefer to, uh, to deem the first Shmuel, the Shmuel that passes like Hananya, that an upgrade is okay. We prefer that quote of Shmuel over the other quote of Shmuel, who seems to indicate otherwise. So where is this clarity? The itma as we learned. Rav Chibar Ashi, Omar Rav. So he quoted Rav as saying, Bein Lenoi, whether it's for beauty or for security, it's also. So finally we have a, a, a name attached to the Shita. Rav Chibar actually quotes Rav to be the Shita who holds that in all cases it's also. Whether it's for adornment or for Shmira because it's an upgrading, it's an unnecessary addition of Shmira and considered to be a Masri. Rav Chibar Aben Omar Shmuel, he's directly quoting Shmuel. Who says, Lenoi Asr? You're right, if it's merely coming, Lenoi, to beautify, then typically a, a Ritsu is not placed on the par for this purpose. It's not considered to be a Tachshit. However, Lashamer, if it's placed there for Shmira, for the owner to grab onto it to lead his animal, Mutter, it is allowed, although, as we said earlier, it's not really necessary for the para, and it's considered to be a Shmiri Yisera, and a Tirusi Yisera, an unnecessary upgrade. Nevertheless, we see clearly. And Shmuel subscribes to the opinion that Nitirusi Yisera is okay. So in conclusion, regarding a Ritsu on a para, Rav holds, in all cases, it's Asr. Shmuel holds, if it's Lenoi, it's Asr. But Lishamer, it's Mutter, because he holds that an upgrade is Mutter. Says more Meisfei, we have a Kashif on a Braisa, on Rav, who holds that Shmiri Yisera is considered to be a Masu Elot, regarding Shabbos. Let's take a look at this mission, it's actually a mission. It says the mission in Pura Kshara Baaleb Meisera. We're speaking about the Pura Duma, who's not allowed to have a, uh, a load put on him that makes him unfit, makes him puzzle. So what if the owner uh, tied the uh, the Meisera, the reins around the leash around the um, around the Pura Duma? Is that considered to be a load? Kshara, it's fine. It doesn't become puzzle. It's not considered to be a load. Now, as we said before, a Pura doesn't need uh, this type of a security. He walks. 
he's a, a compliant uh, uh, animal. He doesn't need any leashes, any reins. So this is a shmira yisera, an unnecessary upgrade. If you, if Rav maintains that a shmira yisera is considered to be a load with regard to Shabbos, so too with regard to Paraduma. Why don't we consider it to be a masoy? It's as though the par is carrying a load. It's not considered to be an item of apparel, a, a, an adornment, something which is bottled to the par. He's carrying a load, an unnecessary object. Asher loy ola leo oil, Amarachman. Torah says clearly that a paradum is only kosher if a yoke was not placed on it. So if one places a load on a par, he nullifies, he makes a puzzle. Omar Abaye says Abaye like this. You're right. Typically, um, this is considered to be a masoy and would indeed disqualify the paraduma, just as we consider it to be a masoy on Shabbos. This case of the Mishnah speaking about a unique circumstance. Omar Abaye bimalicha, merely here speaking about one who is traveling with his par, taking from city to city. In that case, there's a concern that the par will veer off to the pasture, is tempted to go graze on the side of the road. So the only needs to take an extra measure of, of security to, to restrain his, uh, his para, and therefore he has the moisture there. So in this circumstance, it's not considered to be a load. It is considered to be something necessary for its shmira. Rav Amar, Shani para, the Dumei Yikar, and a paraduma is very different than an ordinary para, than a typical cow, because it's very expensive. And generally speaking, the owner adds a, a added measure of, of security to the para on account of its high value. He wants to make sure it doesn't disappear, and make sure that, uh, that it, it, somebody doesn't put a load on it, etc. So, the point here is that this situation requires this type of shmira. It's not considered to be a shmira, you say. Ravina, maybe my read this, we're speaking about a para who exhibits a rebellious, uh, um, a rebellious character, a rebellious attitude, and therefore it requires this in Tarusi is serious added measure of, of restraint and security, and in this case, it's not considered to be a masu. So in summary, the mission taught us that a ritsua placed between the horns of a para is not something which the para can carry out into the Shusarabim. We have machlekes, rab holds, that whether it's placed for noy or for shmir yisera, is considered to be a masu. Shmuel says, I agree about noy. But if it's there for Shmira, it's okay, although it's providing that extra measure of unnecessary Shmira, it's not considered to be a Masri. Now, we had a little background until we got to this conclusion. We had um, three, apparently three quotes from Shmuel, which seemed to, to be contradictory. We began with the quote that Shmuel Paskins, he rules like Hananiah, that an added measure of Shmira, Shmira, say is okay. Then we had another quote of Shmuel, which seemed to indicate that we are memite, uh, an upgrade, for instance, a gomma who doesn't need a nose ring. It is excluded, it can't be used on Shabbos. A gomma cannot walk out wearing a nose ring. Here it appears that Shmohozi Shmir Yisera is not appropriate. And we concluded that since we have a direct quote from Shmuel of Chia, Bar Abin tells us in the name of Shmuel that Shmir Yisera is appropriate, is okay, is acceptable, so we conclude accordingly and we attribute the shita that holds Shmir is say is okay to Shmo. Continues the Gemara. Hasus Besher. Mishnah told us. Perhaps let's take a look back at the Mishnah at the beginning of the Perik. In the middle of the Mishnah, Hasus Besher, the uh, horse wears his share. Now, the share is a. Uh, it's comprised of three parts. It has a, the collar, the, the necklace around the around the uh, the chain around the neck of the animal. That's one part. Then it has a, a leash some sort of rope attached with a ring to this collar. So it's a three-part um, system. The sus goes out wearing the share. It's considered to be appropriate for the sus. And the mission continues, share, all types of creatures that wear, typically wear the share. For instance, Rashi says a hunting dog. share. they can go out wearing the share. And they're pulled through the share. Now, what does it mean, share? They go out wearing the share. And they're pulled with the share. What does this mean? seems to be redundant, a double lush. So we have Machlokas. Back to our Gemara, Sus Bishir. Ma Yoytzin, Umay Nemshachem. What does the Mishnah mean? They go out and they're pulled. Omar Afuna, it's referring to two separate types of things. Oy Yoytzin Nechroch, Kruchen. Oy Nemshachem. So Afuna holds that even if this, uh, this, this leash 
is wrapped around the neck and it's there for the sake of noy, of adornment, it's considered to be part of the part of the uh, it's part of the behemoth, it's considered to be bottled the behemoth, it's a tachshit of the behemoth. It, it's, a, it's like a piece of jewelry that adorns them, it's not considered to be a, a masr. Therefore, Puna interprets the mission like this. He says, Yoitzin means that it may go out wearing the leash, even if it's kruchen, if it's wrapped around his neck and is not serving any purpose other than noy, than adornment. Oy, or nimshachen. Or it can go out in a manner where the leash is, is dangling, is loose, it's not wrapped around his neck, where the owner pulls and leads the animal, pulling, holding on to the leash. So in either case, if it's lenoi or shmira, it's okay. Ushmol amar, no. It is only mutter if it is there for the sake of shmira. Apparently, shmol is that uh, this is not typically done to, the, to this animal. This, uh, this share is not applied for, for noi, for adornment. Therefore, if it's only there for noi, if it's wrapped around his neck and doesn't serve as a shmira, doesn't serve the owner, uh, the owner's purpose of, of restraining and, and controlling his animal with it, is considered to be a masi. So therefore, shmol interprets the mission as, as follows. Shmol amar yoitzin imshachim. Now, when the mission said Yoitzim Mishir, when Mishacham Mishir, the mission is, is explaining itself. In what manner can he go out wearing the Mishir? Yoitzim Mishir, only if it's in Mishacham Mishir, if it's there, in a manner where the owner pulls the animal through the Mishir, through holding on to the, to the leash. But if it's Kruchen, if it's wrapped around its neck, and it's only serving the, the purpose of Noy adornment, that is considered to be a Masa. But Masnisatana, and the Bryce we learned, a support of Shmuel, Yoitz and Kruchen the uh, the animal can go out wearing the, uh, the uh, share and the leash wrapped around his, his neck, Li Moshech in a manner which allows the owner to grab onto it for security to lead his animal. As Rashi explains, this is Rashi right, right off to the side here, Kruchen Li Moshech explains Rashi as follows, although it's wrapped, nevertheless it is used for Shmir. How's that? Kruchen berevach, it's wrapped in a loose manner. Sheyochel lahachnes yodai bein akrach letzaver, where the owner has the uh, has the option, has the ability to place his hand between the wrapping and the neck, meaning to grab onto this wrapped cord. So in that manner, it's serving the purpose of shmir and tzmuta. Oh, he says Rashi. Alternatively, yoniach ma'at menachevli. He should leave some of the rope dangling. So if he sees the animal is about to run away, he can quickly grab the dangling part and secure the animal in that manner. So when the Baisa tells us, the Baisa means it's wrapped, but in a way that it's still serving the purpose of Shmira, and this is the right to Shmuel, that only if it's for the purpose of Shmira, it is Mutter. Continues the Gemara. Omar Rav Yitzh, I noticed, the calves, of the home of Huna, Yoitzin, Be'afsarein, they would go out with this afsar, this uh, halter that we mentioned earlier, a rope that's uh, connected, wrapped, uh, uh, tied to his mouth, it goes around the neck. So this afsar was actually kruchen b'shabas, it was wrapped completely around the neck of the agolim, of the calves. Apparently it was only serving the purpose of noy, of adornment. It was mutter. So Yerbe Huna actually conducted himself in, in, his, in his home, in accordance with his shita, mentioned earlier that even wrapping this uh, this rain, this leash, in a manner where it's only serving the purpose of noiv adornment, is mutter on Shabbos. So not only did he uh, present the shita, but he actually acted accordingly. Ki Osir of Dimi. When Rav Dimi came, he related the following thing. Omar Chanina, he said, Rav Chanina said, Muloy Shobes Rebbe, the uh, mules in the home of Rebbe, Yoitzois Ba'afsarei and Shabbos. They would go out to Shuram wearing their afsar, this halter, this rope, on Shabbos. Says, well, what does he mean to say? Iboilu. They asked the question. Kruchen. Does he mean that the afsar was wrapped around its neck and served the purpose of noy? And Rebbe holds that noy is mutter. Oynim Shachem was speaking about leading the animal, leading the calf with his afsar. It wasn't wrapped around his neck. It was there for the purpose of Shmira. However, Kricha, the noy is also. We're not sure. Says, well, Toshma, come and listen to the right. So he said, he added some more detail. He said, the name of Chanina, Omar of Chanina, Muloy Shabbos Rebbe, the mules of Rebbe's home, Yoitzit, they would go out to Shuram on Shabbos, Ba'af Serein Kruchim B'Shabbos. So their Afsa was actually wrapped around the neck. Apparently he holds that Noyez Mutter. 
Okay, so you have a raya. The Rebbe indeed allows the Afsa to be to serve a noy purpose, an adornment purpose, a tachshit purpose, and it's not considered to be a masu. Continues the Gemara. So we have two quotes. We have Rav Dimi, who related that the Muloys, the, the mules of Beis Rebbe, want to wear the Afsar. We have a Shmoger Yehuda who added another detail, elaborated, said, well, even wrapped is mutter. So Amaru Rabbanon, the Rabbanon challenged. They said in front of Rav Asi as follows. Amaru Rabbanon, come Rav Asi. Had Rav Shmoger Yehuda, like Why do we need two quotes? We need two testimonies. First from Rav Dimi, then we have Rav Shmoger Yehuda. They seem to be duplicating each other. Why? Mid Rav Dimi Nafka. We know this halacha, that even kricha, even if they're they're wrapped around the neck for noy. That it's mutter, we know that for Rabdimi, even though Rabdimi didn't, didn't express that, didn't stipulate that. Nevertheless, it's pretty obvious and evident that that's what he meant. Why? Because if you propose that Rabdimi was merely telling us that the Afsar, which is there for Mashiach, to hold on to lead the animal with it for Shmir's sake, only in that manner did Rabbi allow. But not for Noy, if that's what he's trying to say. And that's why we needed this second testimony of Rabbi Shmuel Yehuda, who elaborated and added further that even for Noy is mutter. If that's the case, is that what Rabbi was t- trying to tell us? Midr of Yehuda, the fact that, he, that Rabbi allows the, the animal to go out wearing his afsar when it is serving the point and the purpose of restraining of Shmira, we know that already. We don't need Rabbi Dimi to tell us that. We know that from elsewhere, from Rabbi Yehuda Mashmo. How do we know that? The Amar Vidama Shmuel, this is the Gemara we learned before. The Rav Yudah Amar Shmuel tells us, they would ask the Shaila in front of Rebbe, what if things were switched around? If the various uh, uh, gear was switched around, uh, for instance, the Gamal was outfitted with a nose ring, etc., is that considered to be appropriate for Shabbos? And what was the conclusion? Amar Lafanov, Rav Shmuel Rav Yaisi. So Rav Shmuel Rav Yaisi, Went ahead and he announced in front of Rabbi, Kachamar Abba, this is what my father said, Arba Behemois, Yoitzis Ba'afsar, the following four Behemois, we are an Afsar on Shabbos, Hasus, Vapered, a horse and a mule, Vagom the Chamor, a camel and a Chamor. So presumably, Rabbi agrees to this, that a parrot, a mule, can be outfitted with an Afsar on Shabbos. So we know that from there already. Why do we need Rav Dimi's testimony that the Agolim of Beis Rebbe would go out wearing the Afsar? The Muloy, sorry, the Muloy of Beis Rebbe, the, uh, the uh, mules of, of Rebbe's home would go out wearing an Afsar. It's pretty obvious that Rebbe subscribed to that view. We know that already. So evidently, what is Rav Dimi coming to tell us with his, uh, with his testimony? He's coming to add a fact. He's coming to say, even if it's there, in a manner of noy, if the officer is, is merely wrapped around its neck and serving a, a purpose of noy, of adornment, that too is mutter. Apparently it's coming to add to what we've already known earlier. So, at the end of the day, why do we need the additional testimony, the additional statement from Rav Yudam Bar Shmo, Rav Yehuda, who comes to tell us that even the noy is mutter, we know that from Rav Dimi. Says the Gemara, Omar Lu Rav Asi. So Rav Asi responded to the Rabban who asked the question. What's the uh, point and purpose of Rav Dimi's test, of Rav Shmuel Rav Yudah's testimony? So he said, very simple. Yitzrich, we indeed need it. Why? The Imer of Yudah Nafka, because if only for the fact that we, that we know the first, the story of, Rav, of the Rav Yudah Mashmuel, with the, the whole uh, Shail of Machlifin and the response of Shmuel Rav Yaisi, if only for that, if from there alone, that wouldn't be sufficient. Why? Have I would think, Omer Lafan of Lake Kibbalmanet. True indeed, Rabbi Shmuel Rabbi Yesi presented the shita to Rabbi. He said, you know, my father actually told us that a mule can go out wearing an afsar. So he presented it to Rabbi. But how do we know that Rabbi accepted that and agreed to that? Kamash under Rav Dimi. Therefore, Rav Dimi needs to come and tell us, yes, I know for sure, for certainty, that Rabbi actually subscribes to this view. He allows in practice. I know that in his, in his own household, his mules will go out wearing the afsar. So that's the point, the benefit of, of, of having Rav Dimi tell us that story. Be the Rav Dimi. But if only for that, if only we would have that statement of Rav Dimi, that also wouldn't be sufficient. Have I mean, I would think. Hanamil and Mishachan. Okay, so the way they after, but in what manner? Perhaps it's, it's only because it's coming to serve as a Shmira. It's meant to be used to pull the animal with it. 
But if it's wrapped around the neck and it's only serving the purpose of noy, perhaps that's not okay. That's why we need the Rav Shmuel Bar Yehuda. Shmuel Bar Yehuda comes and teaches us and informs us. Not only does Rebbe allow the mule to be outfitted with the Afsar on Shabbos, not only does he allow it to be used for Meshicha, to lead him and to keep him secure, but even for Noi, it's also okay. So in summary, we learned uh, two different halachas. First regarding this share, this uh, three-part apparatus, the collar with the ring, with the uh, leash attached to it. So we have a machleki between Rav Huna and Shmuel. Rav Huna says, if it is coming for the sake of Noi or for the sake of uh, Shmira, in both cases, it's okay, it's not considered to be a masi. Shmuel disagrees, he says, only if it's coming for Shmira, it's okay, but coming for Dorn and for Noi, it's considered to be a masi. What about the Afsar? The Gemara concluded that Rebbe holds that a mule can be outfitted with an Afsar, and the Afsar is not only is not, not only coming to uh, serve for Shmira, to be led with the Afsar, but even if the Afsar is wrapped around its neck and serving the purpose of Noi, of adornment, it too is okay on Shabbos. Continues the Gemara. Back to the share, this uh, color. The Mishnah told us, Umazen alein, v'toivlan b'mkoimah. If they become tamay, he can go ahead and sprinkle the afer paradum on it, or immerse it in the mikveh while it's still on the animal. Says the Gemara. One second here. How did this shear, how did this necklace become tummy in the first place? It's serving an animal. Something which is mishamish, an animal. It's not makabal tumah. Lememra. How do you propose? The bnei kibula tumaninu. You suggest. Lememra, do you suggest the bnei kibula tumaninu? That these items, which are serving the animal, are susceptible to tumah. Fatanad, but haven't we learned in the Mishnah? Tabaz, odam tmeya. A, a personal ring, a ring meant for an Adam, is Makabal although it's not a beggar, Rashi says we learn it from a, a special Pasek, that even a Takshit, a piece of jewelry, serving an Adam, is Makabal This is Rashi, uh, eight lines from the bottom. Tmeya says Rashi is a Takshit too, because it's, it's an adornment, it's a Takshit. Ume Midyan Yalfinon, we learn from the story of Midyan, in Bamidwar, that the Torah lists all types of tachshitin, of uh, pieces of jewelry, the monob and tachshitin, it's od of its summit, va'akulu, and all those items, when they become tummy, the Pasuk says, va'akulu koitis chato v'atam eshvichim. You must be matar, you must purify them. Apparently, even a piece of jewelry, an article of jewelry, is makabotuma, provided that it's serving an adam. However, v'tabaz, back to the Gemara, v'tabaz, behemah v'keilim, but a tabaz, which is serving a behemah, or a kli, v'shor kal tabois, other types of rings, Kigoyim says Rashi on the last line, Kigoyim, Hasu is Ledelis. It is a uh, ring affixed to a door, perhaps to, uh, to sound, uh, for, for sounding when somebody comes to the door. This is the way he, he sounds a, 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 a bell. So the point is that the, the Tabaz is not serving an Adam, says the Mishnah Tahoe Rois. They're tar. Because unless it's serving an Adam, it's not a couple of So how did this share, this color, serving an animal, become Tommy in the first place? Says in Martuturutz. Number one, Amar of Yitzchak. Some take out the word Nafcha. Bevoin minoy adam lenoy behema. You're right. If it's merely a tachshit of behema, it's not a kabotuma. We're speaking about this necklace, which was initially servicing an adam. It was used for adornment for a person, and then was transferred and designated for the uh, given over to the behema. So it became tuma while it was serving the adam. Even though right now it's wrapped around the behemoth's neck, it still retains its 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 tumet status and it's still tummy. So you're right. At the, at the in the present state, while it's serving the behemoth, it cannot have uh, contracted tumor because it's a tashmish of a behemoth. It's a tashmish of behemoth. We're speaking about that it was initially originally serving an adam, and that's when it became tummy, and it's still tummy as a result. Rav Yosef Amar, but a little different. He says as follows: You're you're assuming that this. Uh, this necklace, this collar, is considered to be a shimush behema, a tachshit behema. No, says Rav Yosef. It's actually considered to be a utensil, a personal utensil, a, 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 a utensil, a kli intended for an adam, a tachshit for an adam. Why? Says Rav Yosef, 
who is deriving benefit from this, from this kala? Who, who's, uh, who's using it? The behemoth needs it or the person needs it? It's providing a shimush for the person. It says Rashi, it's considered to be a klit hashmish to Adam. It's serving the person. Therefore, it's makabotum. Let's see inside. Rabbi Yisif Amr, hoyl ba'adam ha'moshech behemes ha'behemah. Since the owner uses it to lead the behemoth, to control the behemoth, it's considered to be a kli, tashmish to Adam, and kibim kabotum. Me like Tanya, haven't we learned? In a bright, a similar concept, makal shabemah shamatechas. The a staff, a metal staff, used to, uh, to hit the behemoth, to lead the behemoth, to drive the animal. Mekabotum. It is mekabotum. Why? It's a kli behemoth. The answer is, Matam hoyl va'odam roidabahem because the, the person, the owner, uses it to drive his cattle, to drive his behemoths. Therefore, it's considered to be a tashmish the Adam and Makabotum. It's serving a, a, a human, serving a person, serving an Adam. Oh, I'm here too by the, by the share, by this color. Hoyl va'odam roidabahem, since the owner uses it to control the animal, it's considered to be a kli, shimush the Adam, designated to be used by the Adam and his Makabotum. So the question was, how is it Makabotum? We have two answers. Either it became Tame when it was still serving an Adam, before, prior to being transferred to the Behema. Number two, even at the present time, it's considered to be a Kli, which is serving the Adam Akibim Kabotum. Continues the Gemara with Taizum Mim Kaiman, so you can immerse the, the share, this collar, this necklace, on the, its place while the Behema is wearing it. Says the Gemara, how can you do that? Vayika Chatzitza. There's a Chatzitza here, since the, uh, the leash, which is attached to the, to the necklace with a, with a ring, is firmly connected, it's tightly fitted, it doesn't allow the water to get there between the rings and considered to be a chatzitza. Tesis learns that the Gemara is assuming that the, uh, the necklace, this, this collar is, is uh, tightly fitting, it's wrapped tightly around the behema and, is, and, and creates a chatzitza. So how can it be a toivel, this share while it's on the behema? Omar of Ami Bisharisham was speaking about that he hammered, he flattened it out, meaning he uh, he uh, widened the, the ring there, and now the rings are, are loosely fitted, and there's no problem chatzitz. Okay, says the Gemara. Now let's analyze Rami. Rami says he flattened out the rings, he hammered it. Now we need to know one thing: that a ring which is flattened out is not really uh, doesn't look so pretty and is not suitable to be used for an adam any longer. Certainly for behemoth's use, it's fine. Perhaps it's even better now. So the the uh, the collar is looser, it could, it, it, uh, he increased its size, it can be used for a, a, a wider neck. So, let's analyze Rav Ami's terrors. He widened it, he, he flattened it, he hammered it. Now, in view of the previous Gemara, we had a kasha, how is this thing Mechavot We had two terrors. Either it was initially used for a person, and that's how it became Tommy, or even at the present moment, it's serving the other. Says the Lema, perhaps. Rav Ami, Rav Yisrael, Rav Ami is Shita. Rav Ami tells us that he hammered out this, uh, this, this share, this chain, which allows it to be toivel in the mikvah when it becomes tummy. So apparently, Rav Ami holds that even a chain which was hammered out still retains its tumma, still considered to be tummy, and requires tefillah. Who is he following? Who is who is his Shita compatible with? It seems like Rav Ami is following Rav Yisrael's Shita who tells us that the reason why the share is tummy is because in the present moment it's considered to be a kli tashash to Adam and can become a tuma presently. And therefore, even if it's speaking about Rizchan that he flattened out, then he hammered out those, those rings. Since it's suitable to be used for a behemoth, so it's suitable to be used in its current state for the behemoth, it is makav tuma. However, if Rav Ami is following the interpretation of Yitzchak. The Iker of Yitzchak Nafcha, the Omar who told us that why is this chain coming in the first place? Because it's speaking about the Boyin, the Menai Adam, because initially it was used for the, for the Adam, and then was transferred to the Behema. So when did it become Tami? Not now, not when it was serving the Behema. It must be that the Tuma arrived earlier when it was still serving the Adam. Okay? So if the reason why it's tummy is based on the fact that it's a tashmish to Adam, what happens when he hammers it out and renders it unfit for an Adam? Certainly the tummy should disappear because he is nullifying this kli. He's making it unfit 
to be used for the Adam. And the reason for the Tumah, to begin with, was only because it was serving an Adam. Let's see inside. Because if he's found the sheet of Rabbi Yitzchak, who tells us why is this, is this chain tummy? The Omar, Adam, because it became tummy when it was serving the Adam. So this chain was coming from being, serving an Adam and then transferred to a behemoth. Now, keep the risk, now that he hammered it out, he did an action, he did a maisa, which changed the form of this utensil. And as a result, the tumor should disappear, should fly away. Why? Because he's nullifying, he's negating its status. He's making it, he's being a vatal the kli. It can't be used for an adam any longer. And that is the reason for its tumah. Now, what do we know this concept from that? Doing a maisa to change the form of the kli is mavatal the kli. That's not as we learned. Kola kalim, yordin de tumas and b'mashop. Misha teaches us that all types of utensils, where the owner had decided, okay, that's it, I'm finished, I. I I completed it. I don't plan on adding any more work to it. It's considered to be, as a result of this machshav, it's considered to be nigma malachta. Its work is completed and it descends into tumah, meaning it becomes capable, susceptible of being kabbal tumah. Kala Kalim says the Mishnah again: Yordin lidei tumason. They become susceptible to tumah machshav merely as a result of the machshav, the intention of the owner, who has no plans to do any further work on this item. But once it becomes susceptible to tumor, once it arrives at that state, he can't undo it so easily. Vein oilin mit and it can't emerge from that state. Elo bishini maisa, unless he does a shinu maisa, unless he indicates through an action that, you know what, I plan on doing some more work to this item, and thereby he changes its status. It's considered to be back. He reverts it to a klisha, an unfinished vessel, and it cannot be makabal to any longer. For instance, Rashi says a piece of uh, leather hide that can go either way. He can, uh, it's suitable to use as a rug, and in that case it doesn't require much more work. It uh, simply takes the, uh, the leather, the, the hide, places it on the floor and he uses it. It doesn't require any work. Or he can take it to a different direction, he can use it for straps or make, make from it some type of leather, leather uh, product. In that case, certainly the work was not completed or finished. So if his machshav is, well, I'm using it as a rug, at this point, is susceptible to Mikabal Tumah. But if he should change his mind, decide, you know what, I want to use it for Ritsuis to make from its straps, it does not change the status, it doesn't revert to its old status unless he does a mice, he begins uh, cutting it, and by doing so he indicates, he demonstrates his intention to continue to resume work on this item, and it's considered to be from now on, and it cannot be Mikabal Tumah. Now the same concept applies to something which is already tummy. If a Kli is already tummy, it cannot lose its tumah status unless, unless he, he does a shini maisa. He changes the, the appearance of the item. He, he does a, an action which changes its surah, the form of the item. And by doing so, he's mavatal the kli. He nullifies its use. He renders it unfit for use. And uh, it's considered to be batal materis kli and becomes tar. Says Mark, getting back to our case, this chain which became tummy due to the fact that it was serving an Adam. Now when he went ahead and flattened it, he hammered it. <laughs> he rendered it unfit for an Adam. This shini mice is mavatal the kli. It should become tar. So why does it need a mikvah to begin with? Why does the mission discuss being toivel this share when it's still in its place on the animal? It doesn't need a mikvah. It's not tummy any longer. So apparently, says the Gemara, Rav Ami, who told us that he flattened out this, that he hammered out this chain, uh, this sheet is compatible with Rav Yosef's sheet, who tells us the reason for the tumah, the, the source for the source reason of the tumah on this chain is because right now, currently, it's considered to be a tashmash to Adam because the owner uses it to control the animal, and therefore, hammering the the, uh, the chain does not nullify its status because he doesn't he's not ruining it. It's still perfectly usable and suitable for him. Okay, so once again, apparently Rav Ami is following Shitas, Rav Yosef, and he cannot, he cannot subscribe to the view, to the interpretation of Rav Yitzchak, that it originated as a Tashmash Adam and became Tommy then, because otherwise it would become Tar as a result of the hammering. So that's why not so fast. Savalak Rav Yudah. Perhaps Rav Ami subscribes to Shitas Rav Yudah, who holds. The Omar, Maisel is Sakin. If one does a Maisel, even if he changes the, the form of the Kli, 
love Maisa. We don't view it as a Maisa, meaning it doesn't ruin the, the terrorist Kli. It's not Mevatel. He's not nullifying the Kli. By simply doing a Maisa, which is a constructive act. In this case, it's a constructive act. Because flattening out the, the rings, loosening the chain on the animal, actually is, is beneficial. He loosens it, makes it more comfortable. Perhaps now it's, it can be used for a larger animal. So, although he's doing a Shini Maisa here, and although the reason for this tumor was because it was serving the Adam, and this Shini Maisa renders it unfair for an Adam. However, in its current state, when it's serving the behemoth, this mice is actually beneficial to it. It's a constructive shini mice. Read the holds. And that does not negate its teres kli. It's not bottom teres kli and still retains its tumor status. So, certainly Rav Ami can hold like Rav Yitzhak as well. The reason why it's tummy is because it became tummy when it was serving the Adam. Now, although he hammered it out, it doesn't change the status of the kli because in its current state, in its current function, its current use, in the context of serving the behemoth, this mice is actually beneficial to it. And according to Yehuda, in this case, it retains its status as Kli, and certainly still Tommy requires to feel in the mikvah. So in summary, the Mishnah tells us that this chain, this share, is, uh, is Tommy and needs to be, uh, to be immersed in the mikvah. The Tvila can take place even when it's sitting on the animal. The more asks, how is it Makabal Tumah in the first place? Since it is Meshamish of behemoth, Terrorist number one was that it was Makabal Tumah when it served the Adam before transferring to the Behemoth. Second terrorist was that even in current state it's considered to be a Mishamish La Adam because the owner is leading the, the animal with this chain and therefore can become Tame even right now. Now, what about Chatzitza? Why isn't it considered to be a problem Chatzitza? We have two terrorists. Firstly, was of Ami's terrorists that is speaking about that he hammered it out, loosened the, the, uh, the rings. The second terror says the Gemara now, Vemasnisa Tani. In the Bryce we learned, what is the Pshat? How can we take this to the mikvah? What about the problem Chatzitza? And speaking speaking about initially the the holes of the of the uh, of the of the collar were fashioned in a, in a in a way that they were large, they were big, they were broad, and there's plenty of place for the water to go through. It all fits very loosely together and doesn't pose a problem Chatzitza. Continues the Gemara, Shal Talmud Echot. Migola Elian, it was a student from the upper Galil who asked a Shaila, Esra Belez, Shamati, I heard, Shecholkin ben Tabas Tabas. I heard that there's some sort of halachic distinction between one sort of ring and another sort of ring. And I'm not sure exactly in what context we're speaking about. Armel Esra Belez responded, Shemel Shamata, perhaps what you heard was only with regard to Shabbos, Elian Shabbos. As the Mishnah tells us later on, the Perak, Actually, the next parak, Naf Samach, that can one uh, go out to Rishis Rabbin wearing a tabas ring? It depends. If it's a tabas sheyeshal chosim that uh, contains a, a a seal, that's considered to be a lot. But if it's a tabas that does not have a seal, that's considered to be an adornment, a tachshit, and his mutter. So there's your difference. The difference between one and the other is regarding Shabbos. A tabas that has a chosim is a masoi. It does not have a chosim. It's okay. It's a tachshit. El elini shabbos, the elini tumah. However, with regard to tumah, dovah da achazi, all rings are alike. They all mekabel tumah. There's no distinction. Dovah da achazi. Says the more is that so? Elini tumah. Dovah da achazi. Is it true that with regard to kabbalas tumah, all rings are equal and they all mekabel tumah? Vatnan. We learned in the mission. Tabas adam tmeir. This is the mission we learned earlier. A ring, a personal ring, a ring that belongs to an adam is tamei. Vatabas behem of a kelim. Otherwise, a taba, a taba of a behema, of a kelem, a shark, a taba is a tairois. So you see, there are differences between various types of tabois, even with regard to tumor. So how can you make that blanket statement all across the board? Tabois, I'm a kabbal tumor. We see that's not so. It says the Marki Kamari, you, Nami, the Adam Kamari. When Rav Razi responded that all tabois, I'm a kabbal tumor, he's speaking about tabois, rings that belong to a person, that are serving an Adam. And there's no difference in that case between the various tabais, the Omer Kabbalah Is that so? With the Adam, the the Achasi, all rings that belong to a person are tummy. Vatani, we learned, Tabas, she is skinner. Lacher, a buckle, which was there for uh, the tightening of the belt. Velik, Shabar, Bing, to keep his uh, sleeves up. 
Torah, it's not directly serving the purpose, only serving indirectly. It's not considered to be a shimish la'odam, and it's not makabotum. Rashi explains that we're speaking of the buckle that's not actually currently attached to the belt, and therefore it's not considered to be part of the belt, and this is considered to be Torah. When is tabas tomim? Eloshel etzbavavad. Only if it's meant to be placed on a finger. A uh, finger ring is tomim. So you see, even with regard to a tabas serving an adam, we have distinctions. If it is a ring belonging on a finger, it's metamim. It becomes tomim. Otherwise, it's not. Says the Markika Amarle. You and Ami. The etzbuk Amarle. Rav Leza was also referring to a a, a finger ring. And in that case, there's no difference between the various types of rings, the Oma Kabotum. Says more, is that so? With the Edzba, Dovada Achsi, all rings uh, placed on a finger are considered to be Makabotum. But now we learn the It depends what material it consists of. Tabash or Mateches. If the Tabash, the ring is made out of metal, the Chosma shall armoid the seal that is embedded in this ring is made from almoid coral, considered to be eights. In that case, Tmeya, this Tabas is Makabotum. Because although the tabash or matechas, the metal ring, is not considered to be a clay kibul, something uh, that, that has a receptacle, because although the almug is placed in there, Tesis explains that this, this base kibul is not considered to be a kibul because it is osri lomali, it's meant to be filled up. So this matechas here is considered to be pshute klimatres, like a flat matechas without a clay kibul. It's not considered to be a receptacle, nevertheless, a klimatres is tummy, even without a clay kibul. So if the main element, the main ingredient of this tabas is metal, although it has some eights there, we give it a, a din of klematechas and it's kabotum. But in the reverse, he shall almig. If the ring is made of this coral, which is considered to be a kli eights, the chayisma shall matechas. But the chayisma, its seal is matechas. Then we look at the main element, which is the eights, and since it is not a kli kibble, it's tohir, it's not kabotum. So you see clearly that even within the context of a finger ring, we have differences between different types of taboys. Says the Gemara Kiko Hamarle, Iwanami, Kula Shomatechas Kamarle. Indeed, when Rav responded that all these rings are Makabotoma, he was speaking out rings made of metal. And indeed, there's no distinction between one and the other. The Oichal, another question this Talmud asked Rav Lezer. Shomati, I heard Shechokin that they differentiate between Machat la Machat, between different types of pins. And I can't really figure out in what context this distinction is applied. Our Malay or Leza responded again in similar fashion. Shemaloi Shamat Elini Shabbos. Perhaps what you heard only pertains to Shabbos. That it depends what type of needle. If it is a sewing needle, one cannot walk out with it. Even if it's pinned to his clothing, it's a masoi. But if it's a pin, it doesn't have a, a eye, a hole, and it's meant for tachshit, for adornment, that is mutter. So there is a difference between one and the other. The ini linian tuma, but with regards to kabbalas tuma, dov the achazi, all needles and pins, all makabal tuma. There's no differentiation. Says the more that's so. Uli ini tuma dov the achazi. They all makabal tuma. But tonight we learn the mission. Machat a needle shenit al chayra, whose tip was clipped off, or you uktsa, or its eye toira. It's unfit for use, and it is tor is not makabal tuma. So you see clearly that there is a certain type of machat which is not Makabal Tumah, and even if it was Tomei, by clipping off the, uh, the uh, tip or the eye, it loses its Kli status and becomes Tar. So we see there's a Chilik between different types of needles. Kikar Marlei Bishlema. Reles was referring to a whole needle, not a clipped off one. U Bishlema, Dabda Achasi. So whole needles are all in the same category with Makabal Tumah, is that so? But now, haven't we learned? Machat Shel Sochaluda. So a... A sewing needle which got rusty. If it gets in the way of the sewing, then it is tar. But if it doesn't get away into fear, then it's still tummy. Provided it's still the shape of the pin is still discernible. So you see clearly there's some sort of macha that is not makabatuma. Says the Markiko Hamalay, Bishifa Kamalay. Rav Lez was referring to a smoothed out pin, not full of a fav rust. Uber Shifa, Dovada Achasi, is that so that all smoothed out needles are considered to be Makabal Tumma? Vatani, but haven't we learned? Machat, Bain and Nakuva, Bain and Nakuva, Mutil Tatla Bashabas. So a needle, whether it was pierced or not, is considered to be a non muksa item, as Rashi explains, 
since theoretically one can use it to plot a splinter. So it still has a function, has a use. And therefore, it's not Muktan Shabbos. However, the stipulation, the condition that the needle needs to be pierced, that is only said with regard to Kabbalah's Tumah, that only a pierced needle is in Kabbalah Tumah. So we can see clearly that there's a difference between what type of needle. If it is pierced, it is suitable for sewing and it's in Kabbalah Tumah. Otherwise, it's not. Second, let's just say that all needles are alike and the same. Says the Gemara, Ha Tirguma Abai. Abai interpreted this price. I'll leave the row according to Rabbi Shita, mentioned later in the Masechta, in a different context. So he explained, interpret this price to refer to a specific case. Begalmi was speaking about unfinished needles which are waiting to be pierced. In this case, since the work wasn't completed, it was not Nigmar Malachta because he intends on piercing them, therefore they're not Makabotum. However, a, a, a pin which is not intended to be pierced, it's, a, it's meant for adornment, a takshit, certainly can become a tumor. So it makes sense. Or Beleza said that all pins, whether or not they have a, a whole, a makabal tumor, meaning all complete pins, all uh, smooth pins, and the pins that are not considered to be loy nigur malachtoi, for instance, a sewing needle with a hole, or a pin for a takshit, which, which doesn't expect a hole to be made to it. It's considered to be nigmar malachta. However, with regard to Shabbos, we find a distinction that a sewing needle with a hole is considered to be a masa if worn on Shabbos. A pin worn for adornment is not. So, in conclusion, regarding a tabas, a ring worn on a person's finger made of metal, so if it has a chosim, a seal, on Shabbos, it's considered to be a masa. And it is makabotum. If it has no seal on Shabbos, one can wear it. And again, it is Mechavotum. Regarding a Machat Shlema, a full needle, without any rust. So if it is pierced on Shabbos, one cannot wear it. It is Mechavotum. And if it is not pierced, it is a, a, a pin for adornment, a tachshit. On Shabbos it can be worn. And certainly it is Mechavotum in this current state. Okay, time for a brief chazor of today's daf. We began discussing the ribbon, the Ritzua Shebein Karni Par, placed on the on the cow, we have a machlekes Rav Shmuel. According to Rav, if it is placed for noy for adornment, it is considered to be a masay. If it's coming for shmir yaser to add an added measure of security, it is also considered to be a masay. Shmuel maintains no shmir yaser is okay. Upgrading the level of security is fine and perfect. It's not considered to be a masay. We proceeded with the halacha of the share of the collar wrapped around the neck of the animal for the purpose of noy. According to Rav Huna, it's considered to be a master. According to Shmuel, it's okay. Similarly, regarding the officer, this rope also wrapped around the, the neck of the animal for the purpose of adornment. According to Rebbe, that too is okay. The Gemara proceeded regarding the share, the chain around the neck of the animal. It requires tvila, and it can be immersed while it's in place. How is it makabal tumah, says the Gemara? It's serving an animal. The Gemara gives us two terutzim. Number one, it was initially serving an adam, and then it became tummy. Or, even in its current state, it's considered to be Mesham Ashladim because the owner uses it to guide his animal. Why isn't it a Chatzitza while it's in place? We have two truths. Either he hammered it out and broadened the, the uh, rings to, make the, to allow the water to go through. Or initially, it was fashioned in that manner which allows the water to come through easily. We concluded with the Allah of Tabas, the Allah of Machat, that we have distinctions regarding Shabbos. But all those distinctions don't apply regarding Kabbalah's Tumor.